I'm originally a Kore Kore to say. Kore Kore is there from the region of Mount Darwin, Urungwe, Dande, Guruwe. That is our region. Things that are intertwined. Yeah, that is Kore Kore. Really tracking back to time. I can't really tell you where my forefathers were actually from. Just like every other race, we, we always migrated. I'm said to be from Hurungwe, where I mentioned they are the Kore Kore people, but I haven't been there also. I was born in Harare, grew up in Harare, everything in Harare. I don't really have a rural home. I came to Cape Town in 2016, which is two years ago. And for me, Kaeli is just, just like home. Born in the ghetto, you come to another ghetto, it's always feeling like home. It was in 2012. I was just off from school. I just found these other guys, they were performing a ritual at their place. I sat there for almost the whole day. I missed school that day listening to Mbira and Mbira and Mbira. The following day I also went there and this guy was like, hey, I, I actually believe you have a calling for this instrument. I'll start teaching you Mbira. I didn't start learning the Nyamaropa, which is the big Mbira. I started with the Nyunga Nyunga, like everyone knows the Nyunga Nyunga, that is the most popular Mbira. Then as time goes, he was like, ah, ah this Mbira will be spoiling you. I need to teach you the original Mbira. He called it the original, I wonder why. He didn't like the Nyunga Nyunga. He said it's now related to much of Western culture. Everyone can play Nyunga Nyunga. That is when I picked up the big Mbira. In the process that I learned Mbira with, it was quite difficult and different. He was like, I don't want to teach you how to play Mbira. I want to teach you how to understand Mbira first. I need Mbira to possess you. So I would go there and sit and just listen him play. It took me long for me to learn even a song. Because he would like say, I'm going to be playing this song for almost some weeks. You just come and listen. To an extent that when he miss a key, I would tell him he missed a key. Then he was like, you're picking the ear. Then he taught me the observation skill. He would be playing, I would be observing. From there, he actually said, you have your own beer. I want you to go and try and practice what you have seen me doing here. Then I would go and practice. Thereafter, you would just come and make a little bit corrections. You're almost there, you're missing this, you're missing this, and you're missing that. Which is why I have a better ear when it comes to music. I don't know tunes. You can call me, this is tune C, this is tune E, this is tune B. I don't know them, but when you miss a key, I'll tell you you're off. three tracks they are from my first album the first I was to do but I left it out which is Kare Nasi Mangwana which means today yesterday and tomorrow so there is a name Zichapera Zichapera it's like there will be an end it will all be gone it's all about African grievances to say I also talk of problems that I believe to be spiritual because I'm doing spiritual music to say, not traditional. I talk of those aspects. I believe they are spiritual problems and how I think we can achieve an end to them spiritually. We are also going to be doing Wakuru Shirewa when the ancient speaks. Yeah, you can talk of the ancient, you can talk of the elders. That's Wakuru. The elders or the ancient. In that song, we just teach people how to understand. They always say a, a small boy on top of a mountain can't see what an old man crouching can see. And we are also doing a song, Sikanema Gariro, which means African customs and spirituality. <laughs>
about modern politics but maybe politics in the ancient states Mbira on its own it represents the struggle and fighting that is why it is even used for prayers people were actually asking me and wondering why is it like every Mbira song is about grievance what is wrong with that there was like no actually the instrument was meant for prayer so we take our grievances to the God it is believed there was no one in Zim when we're talking of Zimbabwe it is believed everybody is from Egypt, which is one other history we can tell through Mbira, because it is believed from that journey Mbira was always involved. So there's this separation in Shona, we call it Baradzanwa. There was the first Baradzanwa when men started to migrate to greener pastures. That is right down through to Southern Africa and everything. We have Mbira in Mozambique, we have Mbira here in South Africa, but mostly all those races from Egypt, the greater spiritual mediums, they settled in Zim, which is where they call Guru Uskwa. Guru Uskwa just deprived from the name Chikuru Uskwa. What is big there is grass. There was ever grass. And Guru Uskwa is closer to the Dande region. It was side of Mozambique and Zim. That is where they are located. That first separation, that is where emerged the song Nemam Sasa. Msasa means a home, shelter. So Nemam Sasa, it was like a struggle to find a home. We have actually nine major tunes, which I might not be able to translate some of them. We have Nemam Sasa, we have Tairewa. Tairewa means we used to say, it's like maybe you are off from a trouble or you are in a trouble and you'll be like, we used to say. <laughs> it's like a, 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 a look back. We have Tairewa, we have Nyabango, we have Chakwi. Chakwi is actually the name for Chaminuka, who is regarded one of the greatest spiritual mediums in Zim. They say his spirit actually guides the leadership of our country. We have Nyabango, there is Garaurimo. Garaurimo, actually translating from Shona to English, it's like just saying, stay in there. Garaurimo, be there always. We have also Bangiza, it's just like talking of revolution. So you would find out all these songs were related to politics in the ancient states. That is how we still relate to them even in modern politics. Because whenever there's a leader and the people, there's always politics. <laughs> we will never run away from the major nine tunes. You'd find out maybe this song you are playing, you'd say it's modern, but you are using the first keys of Chakwi. To those who learned Mbira the way I learned it, you'll be like, ah, oh, this tune you are playing is from Chakwi. So it's easy for someone to even follow using that very song, which is the way we understood music. We didn't have tunes and everything. So like Mbira and spirituality, the moment we play Mbira here, those in the spirit would actually hear, oh, oh there goes our sound. Mbira tracks back to our originality. If we track back to time, there's this sense of oneliness and togetherness, which is always bringing people together. It's all through the spirit, African spirituality. Mbira players, they are regarded as prophets. It's a play of the anointed, as they would say. So actually relating that to the modern day, we still carry that sense. So all those interconnections is bonded on spirituality. In most of my songs, I'll be talking of spirituality, worldliness, and everything. I'm trying to keep up the standards of Mbira, what it was really meant for. 
I myself, I was actually a prophecy. They thought maybe when I grew up, I would be a Sangoma or anything, but I'm just a bitter player. I believe I'm actually possessed sometimes. <laughs> I can even get lost. Sometimes I would be playing, I would start playing like now. At some point, I wouldn't even feel what I'm playing. Just when that consciousness comes back, everyone will be like, hey, the, the way you were playing today, what was going on? And sometimes I don't know even anything. It always happens. I have also met people who physically don't play in Bira, but when they are possessed, they can play in Bira. I've seen such people in what you can call the Pungwes, we call them Bira. Bira is also a transformation from another state to another state, which is why they call Kubira. From the physical to the spiritual, from the spiritual back to the physical. Mm -hmm.